guys, it's me Astrid, and this is my kitty cat Albert. He doesn't really want to be in the video, so I won't make him. But right now, I am re-recording the intro to this video because I had a couple technical difficulties with it. So that explains the sudden scene and outfit change you're about to witness. But I wanted to talk about what I am doing today. And what I am doing today is showing you how to make a mask that will maybe or maybe not help the spread, help prevent the spread of disease um, because we're living in uncertain times right now. First and foremost, I'm not a doctor and this is not medical advice. This is also not a medical device. So keep that in mind as you watch this tutorial and if you decide to do this. Then the next item of business is a lot of people are going to see this introduction and say, Astrid, masks don't help prevent the spread of disease. They don't help. It's not an N95. Blah. And think what you want. I disagree with that strongly because this passes my logic filter. If this mask is on my face while I'm in public, one, I can't touch my fingers into my nose and mouth and touch another surface. So one, I'm not touching a surface with disease and putting it in my face unconsciously. And two, I'm not carrying a disease, touching my face and touching a surface. So that's one way that I believe these prevent the spread of disease. The second way is that if I wear this in public and I go, achoo, my sneeze particles are going to be mostly contained in here, so it will reduce the amount of particles being spread around. And finally, you're going to need to know that even if you wear a mask, the particles from disease are carried on your clothes, on your shopping bags, and other things. So whenever we've been coming home, we not only take our masks and wash them in hot on the washer and dryer, but we also change our clothes and we don't wear clothes that we've worn out inside the house. Again, not medical advice. These are just things that pass my logic filter. So before you go saying, this isn't going to help, I don't care. I think it's going to help. I'm going to do it. And I think lots of people might agree. Finally, I made this mask using a tutorial from a gal called Karanguru. That's my weeb way of pronouncing her channel. I don't know if that's right, but the link is below. And her mask tutorial is really, really lovely. It's filmed well. It's really good. But the reason I made my own is because I thought that um, the, her masks didn't really fit my face. This is the one I made from her tutorial. And you can see there's a big size difference. When I put on this mask, I can open my mouth all the way. Uh, and it doesn't shift around when I'm out. It also covers more of my face and it's more comfortable for me to wear and it accommodates my nose. In the original video, which you can watch below and I recommend, it was made by a petite Japanese woman. So her nose is shaped a little different from mine. So this mask doesn't accommodate my nose. It pushes up into my eyes and it leads me to really need to touch it and when I open my mouth the mask gets moved around with it. So I decided to come up with my own pattern that suits my face which is larger and has a taller nose. That's the main difference between this mask and this mask. Both tutorials I think are good and worth watching. All right now that all of that talking is out of the way I would love for you guys to watch the tutorial. <laughs> Okay, so I also want to stress I'm not an advanced sewing person at all. Um, so, you know, this is just me being an amateur here. But the first thing I do when I get my fabrics home, one, because they've been all over the world and even not in a pandemic situation, I would wash them. Two, because there's a pandemic and we need to have clean things. And three, because it's cotton and we need to pre-shrink it by washing it on hot and drying it on hot. For these reasons, I have already put all this fabric through my washer and dryer. So the next step that I decided to be taking is that I'm going to cut these stupid edges off. I basically just want to um, 
prepare my material to be useful to me. So with cotton, you can just snip it and rip it like that. And it rips this nice clean line. Look, I just ripped all this white stuff off. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to do that to all my fabric. Okay, guys, I didn't record this because it might have been tedious and I'm sure you could figure this part out well on your own. But I've gone and I have cut all the fabric that I'll need into sections. I haven't cut my felt, but it seems like for the pattern that I'm using, you can get five masks made per yard of cotton printed material. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got eight yards, so that should make for 40 masks. Um, which is awesome and I will make a video showing you how I made these templates and try to measure them out for you um, but you can see I've got my little outline the felt is gonna sit like this over the mask and you don't need this part for the ear to roll over and then I made uh, little rectangles of material with an extra centimeter border on each side so that I can lay it out on the fabric and I can pre-plan and pre-cut my fabric because what I have found is that doing this in steps where I cut the fabric that I need then I pin it all at the same time, I sew it all, I iron the seams and so on doing that all batch wise makes doing the masks a much more tolerable process and I think it really increases my efficiencies. Okay, so now I got my felt, and because the felt is thicker, I can't really just like fold it up and cut it. So I'm just putting my little paper that has the centimeter measurements on it, and then I'm just tracing around the edge here so that I get, you know, the right shape, and so that I'm making the best use and wasting the least amount of the fabric that I bought. Now I've got all my fabric cut out, and I've picked out the patterns that I want to use for people. So, um, what you're going to need is you're going to need two pieces of felt for the inner and you're going to need four pieces of cotton for the outer. So here I've got four, this is four layers of cotton. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pin this around all the edges. I've had to reinforce my little, uh, outlines or what is this called? template, my fabric stencil, I don't know, pattern. I've had to reinforce my patterns with tape because I've pinned them so many times for cutting stuff out. I've personally found that um, probably cutting eight layers of the cotton at once is doable and maybe four layers of the felt at once is doable, but I'm just showing you one at a time for the purposes of the video. So I'm going to pin this one just like this, I'm going to cut them out, and then we're going to pin them together to sew. Alright, so I got my six pieces of material here, four cotton, two felt, and what I have realized is that the side that you sew the felt onto is better for the outside because it seems like it holds its shape better. So I'm going to go ahead and say, because this piece of fabric has the prettier design, on part of the face, then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put the felt on this one. So you're just gonna lay these two pieces of felt like this. And then, more neatly of course, what I do is I flip these over and you end up with a felt, cotton, cotton, felt sandwich. And then with these two pieces of cotton, it's uh, much easier. You just lay them together like this and I'm gonna go ahead and pin these here we've got the fabric pinned. It's inside out so that the seam is on the inside. And we've got our outer side with the pretty pattern and our inner side with the less exciting pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and sew these along this edge. So now these are sewn, I'm going to flip them inside out and then I'm going to iron the seams so that they're flat. Here I'm ironing 
Um, it's a little bit of a pain to get this middle section ironed because the iron doesn't go straight up here into the middle and it doesn't go uh, straight up the other way. But I like to crease it up the nose like this and then sidle the iron back and forth to get it nice and flat. And then on this bit I just flatten it out and then I run the iron over here. So I'll get these both ironed and then we'll be ready to pin and sew again. Okay, so I've got both pieces with the seams ironed. And what I like to do is I flip this one inside out and then, because it's, it's a little stiffer and easier to work with, and then I pop this one in the back and I just line up these seams here and here like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and pin like this. So I pin at the nose because I want to get the seams to lie flat. And then I pin at these corners. One at the edge. One at the very end. And then the other side, see y'all don't need to see me pin both sides, but I just put a pin here, 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 and here. So this will take four pins, and then I'll show you when it's all pinned. Okay guys, so here it is pinned all the way around. Now we can sew it. So we've got this all sewn together and what I like to do because there's a lot of material in this corner for the nose is I just kind of I go in and I trim this close to the seam and that helps when I flip it inside out for it to um, kind of go better and iron more easily. So it's just this much material and I'm taking it pretty close to the seam. Then what we're going to do is we're ready to flip this inside out and do our last steps, which are ironing and sewing on the elastics for the ears. So get ready, this is gonna be so cool. Okay. Wait. I got a, I got a cameraman working with me today, so we're getting used to uh, filming together. It's, get your finger out of that shot. Get it out of the shot. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so. Here we've got the nose popped out and you can see already like why I like to put that felt side as the front. It gives it kind of like a nice smooth backing, makes it look good and then this side can be a little more wrinkly so I like to put that felt side on the outer facing. And I picked that moon so the front looks pretty where I'm going to go ahead and iron this. Here it is ironed, the seams are pretty flat, the most important thing um, for ironing is getting these little flaps flattened because we're going to cut some elastics and we're going to fold and pin them and we need them to be straight and cooperative. So here it's ironed and for my woman's size I have my two um, 24 centimeter strips of plastic, strips of elastic. I don't know what's wrong with me today you guys because I can't say words. So. I'm going to take this elastic, get it lined up, get it overlapped like that, just a little. You're going to roll this ear flap piece over one, two, and three times. And then we're going to go ahead and pin it. Alright, so there's one elastic. Seeing as I've already stabbed myself, I'm going to pin the other side off camera, but this is our second to last step before the mask is done. So, 
I'll show you the sewing in just a sec. This part is just a little tricky because this material is so thick. So I slip it in here and I pull it back until I'm right at the spot that I want. And on this, I use kind of like a zigzaggy stitch. So, because I think it'll hold the elastic better, you know, again, I'm not a seamstress. I'm just guessing and doing stuff if I think it makes sense, so. Oh, and sometimes, because it's so thick here, it won't go through, so I've got to push it just a little. Get out of there. That other side. Here is our finished mask. Um, sometimes there's a little bit of looseness in this little spot right here. So I'll hand sew this, these little edges down a little bit, but only if it's, only if it's a problem. I'll show you the final product on my face. All right guys, so I have been making a lot of these for my family and people have been asking me to make more, so I'm making more. And uh, if you've watched this, now you can too. Here's the final mask that I made today. If it's just like this, you can open your mouth and it doesn't pull the mask. And it also accommodates um, a higher nose bridge. This fits men and women. Um, and my husband has a big old head, so <laughs> it, it fits a wide range of people pretty well. The only difference in sizing is that I choose one length of elastic for the women's size and one length of elastic for the men's size. Um, yeah, I'm going to try to do a video so you can copy my pattern. And um, yeah, I think that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. Stay safe out there. Wash your hands. You know, you, I, like I said at the beginning, do your own research, make sure everything passes your own logic filter, and if you want to make these, you go right ahead. Stay safe out there, guys.